What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 17.5 beta 3 to register developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this release, we also got the third beta for iPadOS 17.5, watchOS 10.5, macOS Sonoma 14.5, tvOS 17.5, visionOS 1.2, and for older Macs, macOS 13.6.7 and macOS 12.7.5. And that was actually the RC three, not beta three. But of course, in this video, we're talking all about iOS and iPad OS. So first off, you can see the size of this update came in a little bit larger than beta two. So around 626 megabytes on my 15 pro max. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this new update. So settings general about, we can see the new build number is 21F 5063F. So we actually went from an E build in beta two to an F build in beta three, which is quite interesting. And then if we go back and check out the modem firmware, we have our first modem firmware update of 17.5. So it was 1.60.00 on beta one and beta two, but now in beta three, it's 1.60.02 for the iPhone 15 series. So if you had any type of modem issues or cell connectivity issues on beta one or two, those could potentially be resolved here with this new modem firmware update in beta 3. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 17.5 beta 3? And the first thing we can actually look at the release notes to see this change, and it is a new Apple Universal Link for eSIM install. So it says to use the iOS user agent in web requests to determine when to offer universal links for eSIM, which are only, and you can see they have a typo here, only be enabled, it's supposed to be only to be enabled on 17.4 and later. So that is brand new here in iOS 17.5. And then you can see we have a couple of other issues in here that are not new. These were here in previous betas, and you can see that the wallpaper bug is still here in beta three as well, where it says add new wallpaper sheet does not load any content after restoring a device, but there is a workaround, which is just to reboot. Now this update also seems to fix the Apple music download over cellular bug. So a lot of people had issues in the previous two betas where you could not download music over cellular, but I have tested that here in beta three and it does seem to be working properly. So if you had an issue specifically in Apple music, this was not an issue for Spotify. If you had that issue in Apple music, you should now be able to download music over cellular without issue. And then also I saw a few people reporting that there were issues with the files application in betas one and two, and also going back to iOS 17.4. And this has been fixed for me, it appears. I honestly never even had major issues, you know, in 17.5, but I did have issues in 17.4. And the main issue for a few people has been with markup. So if you go into a PDF that is in the files application and you attempt to mark up the PDF, PDF, a lot of times it would refresh and not allow you to save what you marked up on the PDF. But as you can see here, I'm able to draw on it and tap on done and it saves just fine. We can go back down there and see that what we just marked up is, you know, what we actually did. So that was an issue before that was a bug before, but that appears to be fixed, at least for me in the files application here in 17.5. So in iOS 17.5 beta two, Apple allowed EU users to download applications directly from websites sites and this includes third party app stores and that's exactly what we saw shortly after Apple released beta 2 we saw alt store get released so if you are in the EU you can go ahead and download alt store which is one of the first third party app stores that's available now on the iPhone and this is also where the Delta emulator application will be located because you're not able to download Delta from the app store if you are in the EU and keep in mind it is not free it is 1.5 euros per year. So if you do want to use this third party app store that you download directly from Safari, it is not going to be free because of Apple's fees that they're charging the developers. The stopwatch live activity is still not present here in beta three. So again, I've kind of given up hope that this is ever going to return, but you can see that I have my stopwatch running and there is no live activity up there in the dynamic island. And also there's nothing here on the lock screen. So that appears to be gone.
on for good in iOS 17. Now there is an issue I've noticed on the little search down here on the home screen. So where it says search, take a look at the little jitter that it has every once in a while. So you'll see it has kind of a bug when it appears sometimes. So it hasn't happened yet. There we go. So it happens every once in a while, that little stutter there. And I did not notice that until beta three. So that appears to be a bug just in beta three. And it only happens every maybe 10 scrolls or so. There you go. You saw it again. So that is something that I just started noticing recently. So hopefully that gets fixed in the next update. And then also in the news application, if we go into the puzzles section and then go to quartiles, which is the brand new puzzle here in 17.5 if you tap on the leaderboards right here you can see the leaderboards for quartiles but i never showed the leaderboards for other sections so if you go to back you can see there are actually leaderboards for crossword mini and also for the regular crossword puzzles as well so i never mentioned that before but we do have leaderboards for all three of these games and then as far as the release notes go for beta 3 i already mentioned the new change related to the eSIM, but you can see we do also have a resolved issue for accessibility along with app tracking transparency so there was a bug but it is now fixed and it says app tracking transparency inaccurately returns denied authorization prior to user consenting to tracking so that was a bug before but that has been fixed with 17.5 and then we also have these new features for core motion and also the wallpaper issue that's known and the resolved issue for store kits now as far as the performance goes performance was actually better in beta 2 and i don't typically say that same with battery life which we'll get to that in a moment but the performance was actually a bit better in beta 2 so not only were the geekbench scores high but after using beta 2 for about a week now I've noticed that it was better than beta 1 now I did go ahead and run a fresh Geekbench 6 test here on beta 3 and you can see we scored a 2935 on the single core and a 7176 on the multi core so you can see it did score higher than beta 2 in the single core so it was 29 29 before and then 29 35 here in beta 3 however the multi-core is a good bit lower at 71 76 compared to 72 57 so hopefully we see pretty much the same performance as beta 2 because i had absolutely no complaints with that version and then when it comes to the battery life you guys will have to tell me what i started this video with because i usually am able to tell how the battery life is going to be based on my initial video and how the battery lasts throughout this what's new video because last time i stayed at the same battery from the beginning all the way to the end and that was my first sign that battery life was in fact going to be better on beta 2 compared to beta 1. so i would not expect a back-to-back -back improvement to battery life that's typically pretty rare for apple to do but I would expect the battery life to remain about the same here on beta 3 as beta 2 at least that's my hope and I will give you guys an update if the battery life is the same as beta 2 or potentially better or potentially worse I will update you guys in my Apple weekly episode but so far so good really no complaints and then finally let's talk about what to expect next from Apple so next up is going to be iOS 17.5 beta 4 and I would expect to see that once again since we are on a weekly release schedule I would expect to see that release next week which is going to be most likely on April 30th so the final day of April should be when we get beta 4 now after that I would expect to see the RC release on May 7th and then after that we should get the final release on the week of the 13th now I say that we should get the RC on the on the 7th there because Apple actually announced a new Apple event where they're going to announce the new iPads and Apple pencil I made a full separate video on that and we are going to see that on May 7th and typically Apple Apple does release the RC versions after an event so I would expect that and then we'll likely see the final release of 17.5 iPad OS 17.5 and all the other software on the week of May 13th if not on May 13th itself Apple does typically release those final versions on Mondays not Tuesdays like with betas and then as far as what to expect after that we should see a 17.6 beta 1 start up soon after the release of 17.5 but I don't think anybody's really going to care about that because all eyes are going to be on iOS 18 at the worldwide developers conference in early June but yeah that is iOS 17.5 beta 3 if you guys have found anything new or anything that has changed here in beta 3 let me know in a comment 
down below. It's hard to tell sometimes, you know, if you guys are having a bug, if I'm not having it myself. So let me know if you're having any type of issues in 17.5 and also if 17.5 beta three resolved previous issues. Just let me know your experience down there in the comments below. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and of course, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future iOS 17 and especially iOS 18 beta videos. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my new video on the upcoming Apple event, and I will see you very soon.